I never get bored of my favorite games because I try new games all of the time and I'm excited to try new games all of the time. Couldn't be me. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Peyton. It is nice to meet you, it is nice to see you, and welcome to the corner. Okay, okay, so it's been a few months now since Coral Island's early access version has released for us to be able to play, and maybe you're like me and you started playing it right when it came out, you played it nonstop, you made it your personality, it's all you talked about, and now... Shh, I didn't say it. I didn't say I was bored. I love you, Stairway Games. I didn't say I was bored. Wasn't me. In all seriousness, yes, I have been playing Coral Island a lot less than I had when it originally came out, and I think it's due to a multitude of reasons. I think mainly for me, I'm experiencing some Coral Island burnout because I'm just getting so excited about the future content that is going to be implemented in the game that's not quite there yet. And honestly, since the feedback update, I just noticed that the way I was playing the game got a lot more difficult, so I was less likely to go and play the game because I found myself getting a little bit more frustrated as I was navigating what was different in the game. In farming sim games like Coral Island where there is so, so much to do, sometimes it could feel overwhelming and suddenly it feels like there's nothing to do. So in today's video, I'm here to give you some tips and tricks about how to have fun in Coral Island if maybe you're starting to get a little bit bored as we're waiting for our next huge update. But before we get into it, please be sure to click the lovely little like button as well as subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content like this. Okay, I'll shut up and let's get into it. Okay, so tip number one, I think is a tip that you can pretty much apply to any of your favorite games once they start to get a little boring. If you're really looking for a way to get back to those early feelings of playing Coral Island or whatever game, I think the best way to get those feelings back is to start over. The great thing about Coral Island is you don't have to only have one save file. Luckily, you can have multiple save files in Coral Island, so my number one recommendation if you're feeling really stuck, overwhelmed by what you've done in the game and what you still need to do, sometimes the best way to combat that is to just completely start a new save file and go back into it with a new set of eyes. Starting completely over might not be the best option for everyone. For me, I get really attached to the things that I've collected along the way, so I find it really hard to just abandon my save file and start something new. So if you're like me, you want that kind of fresh feeling without losing all your stuff, what I'm doing right now is literally destroying my farm from head to toe, picking every single item up and just starting my farm over. When I started the game, I didn't really know what the scope of the farm was going to be. And now I've played for a while and seen all of the furniture options. So I have a better idea of what I want my farm to look like. So rather than starting the whole game over and needing to collect all of those things again, I've just decided, take everything off the farm and put it back in the way that I'd like it. Moving on, my biggest tip if you're bored in Coral Island is to try cooking. If you're like me, I didn't know cooking was a thing. I, I must have just missed this in the beginning of the game. But in case you didn't know, you can very much so cook in Coral Island. Now, before the feedback update, the only thing I knew about cooking was you can upgrade your house to have a kitchen. But after that, I was a little bit lost on what I was meant to do because I never got any recipes from anybody. It wasn't until after the feedback update, I was given some recipes and I realized, oh yes, you actually can cook. But what I learned is you actually don't even need the recipes to cook. I didn't know that, so I never cooked in the game. I was missing such a fun aspect of the game because I didn't know it was there. So if you're like me, yes, indeed, you can cook. All you need to do is upgrade your house to have a kitchen, which you can do after a little bit of playing into the game. You just need some money, some resources from the carpenters. They'll set you up with a kitchen. And then from there, all you need to do is gather specific resources to cook the food and specific utensils to cook the food in. Now, the wiki for Coral Island has all of the information on all of the different recipes you can make so far and even more that we can't make yet because the specific crops or forageables don't exist yet. But if you take a look at the wiki, it'll tell you all of the recipes. So you don't actually need to have the recipe card to make the recipes, which I didn't know. So you can go on the wiki, see what you need, see what utensils you need from socket and pan, and boom, you're cooking. 
And not only is cooking fun, because cooking is cute and fun, but it really will help save your money fiasco. If you're like me, you just want pretty decorations, and the money grind has been a lot more difficult since the time that it takes to make artisan goods has gotten longer. But cooking will help you use those same resources and help get you money fast. And also cooked meals can be gifted to people, so it's exciting to give people the meals you've cooked, see if they like them. This is a very exciting part of the game because there's already a lot of recipes in it that you can make, and specifically it's something that you can continue working on because some items you can only get during certain seasons. So if you haven't already tried cooking, I think cooking is something really fun that'll help cure your boredom. Another thing you can do if you're bored in Coral Island is get to know the characters in Starlet Town. Maybe you're like me and you have your hottie that you like to talk to very often, but do you really talk to everybody? Be honest. Be honest. Be honest with yourself here. When is the last time you talked to anybody other than the people you're trying to romance? That's what I thought. So one of my other tips is to try to get max hearts, well, as many hearts as you can in early access with all of the different characters. All of the characters in Coral Island have a rich backstory and a lot to say. And as you get better friends with them, you get to unlock more perks. Specifically, I love being able to snoop in the characters' bedrooms and see what the heck is going on in there. So as you get to a certain level of friendship with people, you can go inside of their house, they start sending you things, and it's just a really great way to find out more about this town that your character is suddenly living in. So my piece of advice is don't just prioritize the hotties, go and talk to everybody and find out what makes all of these characters so unique and so special. And give them presents too. Each character has their own specific likes, dislikes, loves and hate. And yes, you can look on the wiki to get an idea of who likes what and who doesn't, but I also think it's fun to kind of just guess and make it kind of like a game of trying to figure out what each character really likes and what they really don't like. So that's another thing you could do if you haven't already. Something else you can do if you are bored in Coral Island, if you have not already, try and get your town to C rank. At this point, I'm still like over here with a D rank. My town is not looking so hot. But in case you didn't already know, once you get your town to C rank, you start to unlock some goodies. Specifically, you'll unlock special crops that you didn't have before, which is super, super exciting. And there's a bunch of different ways to improve your town's rank. You wanna make sure you get all of your magical offerings done. This is super fun to work on because you need certain things from each season, so it does give you something that is an ongoing goal. As well as make sure you are diving. Truthfully, I never get bored of diving. I really just like it. But if you continue diving, you continue catching different creatures while you're diving. And most importantly, once you heal enough coral sites, that will improve your town rank as well. And the biggest thing that I think is such a fun thing is donating to your museum. Now, since the feedback update, donating to your museum isn't just something you do to unlock the rest of the museum and have Scott be very happy with you. Now, you also will get rewards for donating to the museum. So I like to try and make it my goal of finding new things that I haven't found before, whether that's through fishing, through bug catching, or if that's through going in the mines nonstop until I find new artifacts and donating them to the museum. Because you can actually get some really cool rewards from the museum and it kind of does go by fast. So if you haven't already checked that out, I definitely recommend checking it out. And my final tip is to switch your focus to decorating. Now for me, decorating is already my favorite part of this game and most games that I play. So I've been trying to decorate my farm ever since I made it. However, now that there have been super cute new furniture items added, I feel the inclination to want to make different builds for my farm. Specifically, I want to make different versions of my farm in each one of the different furniture themes. So if you're stuck for things to do and you haven't already decided to decorate your farm, it's so big, there's so much room. What I'd recommend doing is to pick a furniture style that you'd like and stick to that one at first. Obviously, you can mix and match the different furniture styles. That's something I like to do. But if you're new to decorating Coral Island, sometimes it can get a little overwhelming. I would say get cooking, go on that money grind, fish, bug catch, mines, all of that stuff. Try and get your money so you can save it up for all of the furniture in the game and then you can switch your styles. So maybe this month I wanna do the cabin style and maybe next month I wanna try and make my farm into the beach style. I think though this is not primarily a design game, they have given us so many great things 
So why not treat it a little bit more like a design game and switch up the decor more often? Overall, I think there are a lot of fun things you can do in Coral Island. If you're like me and you're starting to get a little bit bored or burnt out while waiting for the next big update, I would just say mainly, do the things you haven't already done. It's so easy to get stuck into your favorite thing. It's so easy to get stuck into just worrying about designing. And then I'm not making friends around town or I'm not trying out cooking. So whatever it is, whatever your favorite thing is in Coral Island, try something else. <laughs> And also another way to keep Coral Island fun is to connect with friends. Whether that's through watching a stream of someone playing it and connecting with that person, or if you join the Coral Island Discord, there are so many people in there, so many people loving the game. I think that talking about the game, finding out new tips and tricks from other people who love it as much as you do, that's the thing that really keeps the community alive while we wait for more exciting stuff. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to click the lovely little like button on your way out and leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on Coral Island right now. Are you still having fun? Are you getting a little bit bored? And if you have any tips on how to fight boredom in Coral Island. Thank you guys again for watching and please consider subscribing to the channel for more cozy chaos like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.